Okay, so we've got our winding in, the motor's back together. I've placed a fan on the motor, a little bit wobbly, um, just to show a proof of concept in that the motor will actually gain more torque when we remove the voltage in the correct direction from the state of windings or the secondary windings if you want to call it that because we are calling it a rotary transformer this is purely to show you the forces with inside a normal transformer that are taking place and how we can turn those forces into rotation that aid in us gaining efficiency from a complete system okay what I've done here um, our new coil that we've wound on and remember we only have one in play at the moment so what you will see is only going to be half of what this will actually do once the second coil is wound on the top I have too many windings on the coil I don't need this much voltage there's about 150 volts coming off of that uh, we don't need that much so I may go to a bigger wire size on the bottom winding as well but we've got our scope hooked up across the coil before the diodes I have two diodes here so I can show you what the effects are of taking or using the current from one direction as opposed to the current that's flowing in the opposite direction as we know when we load a current up in one direction on an inductor it will create a magnetic field that fights the magnetic field that's approaching that inductor um, this of course is the back EMF or the lens force effect whichever you like to call it what we want to do is create an opposite magnetic field so as that it attracts the field on the rotor instead of oppose it we then want to switch that rotor off once that field has reached the centre of the core and we then start to switch on our next rotor segment and this is all done of course with the brushes we're also pulsing this motor um, with rectified AC so it's not so much a pulse but it is kind of a pulse ideally we would want a pulse to DC uh, that will come a little later but first we must get the motor built or the uh, rotor transformer built so as we have usable current both on the output and usable torque on the shaft itself okay so our scope is set on 5 volts per division and I am on 10 times on the probe as you can probably see maybe not I have 0, 4, 10 and then of course uh, here we go our reference so each division is going to be 50 volts on the scope um, of course our voltmeter and our amp meter and of course our watt meter that is before the transformer okay so let's hook the power up to this U-bit system I right, want to start by itself this time Depending on where you have your brushes will depend on whether it's self-starting or not. Um, I've moved these to get the field around the rotor to switch off dead centre to the secondary winding. This gives me the uh, best effect both on rotor speed and rotor torque and also output current. Okay, so at the moment 4.76 amps at 21.66 volts. And you will see here, I'll zero that in, which it is nearly zeroed in. Right about there. We have about 25 volts on the reverse side, but we have a very high current. Now on the forward side of the voltage on the secondary, we have you know, it's tipping 150 volts every now and then it's about 130 volts but the current is very low now both sides almost equate 
to be the same when you're talking in watts. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to hook this up the incorrect way. I'm going to have that shorting out. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, load the bottom current or the reverse current. Now this is the current that causes the land force effect um, in that it creates the same magnetic field as the magnetic field that's approaching the core. And as you can see when we do that, um, this game got dead short. The motor wants to stop. Okay, so now it's pulling 5.72 at 21.5 volts. Now it almost wants to turn, but the reason it won't turn is because the magnetic field that is being built around our state of winding is the same as the magnetic field that's trying to approach it. So we have one field trying to pull towards the iron core and the field that is being produced around the iron core wants to push the rotor backwards. So uh, it's become a neutral situation. Nothing happens. That's not very good to us. So we're drawing a lot of power. We can't use anything because we've got a dead short and we've got no rotation. Now, because of load resistances and all that rubbish, um, the normal generator, it would only bog down. Um, but we'd still rotate. In this situation, because of uh, our rectified AC and the position in which I had the brushes, the forces are equal, so there will be no rotation. Okay, so we're now back in normal mode. Before we go any further, I'll just show you the RPMs at the moment. 1,024. And 4.88 amps at 21.6 volts. And our transformer is consuming 134 watts. That is with the coil open. What we're going to do now is we're going to use the forward voltage or load the forward voltage up. Now because we're loading a voltage in the opposite direction, that means we're going to create a magnetic field that is opposite to the magnetic field approaching it. And we all know what happens when we do that, or should happen. We should get an increased RPM and torque from the motor. Now many have been said, and many have said that you may be able to increase the RPM but the torque would not have been increased. This is the very reason I put this fan on here. To make that fan spin faster, shift more air, we need an increase in torque. And if our rag is moving a little bit, we've seen the RPMs. And uh, now we're going to load up the forward voltage on our stator core or our secondary in our transformer. Uh, what I'll do first, I have two resistors here. I've got a 4 ohm and a 1 ohm resistor. I'll load it up with 4 ohms first. So we'll put a 4 ohm load on our transformer secondary. This is to show you that the more load we put on it, the better the effect. Okay, so that's a 4 ohm load. <coughs> As you can see, we have eliminated the forward voltage. Well, we have used most of the forward voltage. There's absolutely nothing left. Very, very little. Um, and that's with our 4 ohm load. So our RPMs now are 1890. So to speed a fan up, shift more wind, there has to be an increase in shaft torque as well. Now drawing 4 amps at 21.66 volts, and our transformer is consuming 113 watts. Now you have to remember it's only a little 80 watt motor, even though it looks bulky, we're only supplying it with 80 watts at the moment. And of course, we have a higher rotational speed and torque. 
which will be driving the generator eventually and also our power across that 4 ohm load. Now we're going to put it onto a 1 ohm load. So now we're consuming even less power and we have even a higher RPM. So we've gained some more speed and more torque out of the motor shaft. And now we have no forward voltage left or forward current left on the high side. Uh, and our reverse current is almost eliminated as well. So that's pretty interesting. So that's where we're at the moment. This was uh, just to show that the motor is indeed gaining more torque under load and that the heavier the load we put on our output coils, the uh, more torque we gain from the motor and more RPM and of course the less current input required. Now don't forget this effect is going to be doubled because we are yet to put the second coil on the top. So once I've done that, we'll do another video and see how it compares with this setup right now. Cheers.